Hello, everybody. We are live here on the DSC Show. Thank you for coming in. Today's topic, we're going to go over the at least a few teams in the NFL that are possibly going to regress from being a playoff contender from the 2021-2022 season. We are just, like, what, a week before we're heading over to preseason week one over the Hall of Fame game where the Oakland, where the Las Vegas, I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to the whole thing. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders devastated the Jacksonville Jaguars or were completely outmatched depth-wise against the Jacksonville Jaguars um, in a blowout performance in Canton, Ohio, home of the Hall of Fame, of uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And knowing that's the expectations that we're getting over because, you know, preseason is unimportant. It's pretty much a gelling form. I do feel like there's a reason for the preseason to exist. But I don't think it just should be wasteful for televised events, you know. Or at least something that you got to pay to watch. I understand ticket revenue is a major thing, and especially even for preseason games. They do it for most of the other ga uh, leagues and pro sports, and I do feel like it does matter. But besides that, we're going to go over the many teams that are probably going to regress this NFL season. And one of them has got to be the Green Bay Packers. You lose Devontae Adams. Your, your prime defensive unit uh, out of Zadarius Smith. You're stuck with just Adrian Amos and Devondre Campbell with a lack of depth over the linebacking core in a front, uh, front seven that only Preston Smith is going to actually get a pursue. They're probably only going to be a good stop-blocking uni unit to stop the deep ball. Adrian Amos has shown to improve. Shamir uh, Gene Charles is okay in... Jareer Alexander, there's not much. And Darnell Savage is okay. Adrian Amos is going to be the only guy that's going to be any semblance of a good defensive unit next to Eric Stokes. Their, mid their midfield is below average. I, I don't expect much. Alan Lazard shouldn't be a number one option. And picking up a washed freaking Sammy Watkins is not going to improve your offensive unit. Packers are going to be a primordial, run-heavy team that's going to play off the option and hit it short, rely on the pass screen a lot. I mean, I like uh, Josh Myers and Royce Newman. Elkin Jenkins, I, I, I don't think is going to be that much of a reliance over the lineman game because of how much you got to pursue Rodgers. So if Rodgers out of the picture, the Packers are probably going to regress. There, there is no game-changing around even putting Do uh, Jordan Love in. But it depends on how much uh, out of that contract Rodgers is really still going to pursue. Because there is he has already claimed to, you know, not wanting to perform around his latter ages like Tom Brady does. The Niners. Don't get me wrong, the Niners did pick up a very big linebacking uh, improvement with still having Fred Warner, Eric Armstead, but majority of our players are hurt. Chivarius Ward is not going to be enough to come with a grid with a good secondary unit. If we can't pursue the ball, if we're going to have probably Ridgeway or just some bottom feeding late round picks play over the depth chart, we still have a good running rotation. Debo Samuel's restrictions over how he wants to play over the ball and just an unproven Trey Lance. I just can't. I just can't see it. Hopefully he shows some upside over in the preseason before we rotate him out. I didn't even know Nate Sudfield was on this team, so that's how you know a P just our receiving court, you know, our quarterback situation really is. Even though we got some good guys to throw to, Brandon Ayuk, Juwan Jennings that had a great turnaround, Bleak Turner that's a gr good first down option, and Debo Samuels that's still a great Swiss Army knife. Not in his eyes. Trent Williams has been still a consistent All-Pro, and just a reliable frontal unit. Like we have a good co uh, coach structure and a good offensive unit, but without an All-Pro quarterback, I don't think this is going to go well. And especially how they want to deal with Garoppolo still, because you know you're not a good quarterback unless you throw for 300 yards or something. Just saying. That that's just their opinion. Steelers. Obviously, this is going to be a rebuild time with them because uh, how they want to rotate over with Mitchell Trubisky. Najee Harris might be might be having a statistical year. Calvin Austin, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool has to, you know, 
have some huge disciplinary skills and George Pickens. They don't have much on the defense uh, on the tight end unit. Yet their defense is still competitive. So the Steelers are still going to be a competitive source. They got Khalil Davis. They still got Defensive Player of the Year for two times now out of TJ Watt, Devin Bush, Miles Jack, Terrell Edmonds, and Micah Fitzpatrick. This is still a defensive unit that might push out uh, the run stop. Or whenever you make a mistake, loose balls available, Steelers can still make a major defensive place. But uh, we got to know if the Steelers, you know, can get it done on the offensive side that they probably might not. Patriots could regress this season the way their offseason went. Just trying to get their defensive unit of guys that could have made the Pro Bowl around 2016 is not going to hit their team. I'm sorry, I just don't see it. You, you, you sign back Malcolm Butler, Devin McCourty, Adrian Phillips is good, Jabril Peppers hasn't shown any statistical upside since getting drafted against the Browns and then just traded for scraps for Odell Beckham. What was the consistency? And Jalen Mills from the Eagles? If it's not going to be Matthew Judon or Lawrence Guy, if they get hurt, their pass rush is completely screwed. Demarcus Mitchell, I do like a bit of their defensive unit. Patriots don't uh, always, you know... Don't disappoint over the defensive unit. And Nick Folk has been a source of consistency since after his time in Tampa Bay. But my God, this is just this is just weak. Damian Harris, James White now pushing over to the third string. They traded over for now Nelson Aguilar. That's been coming back since his time in uh, in Philly as well, and picking it up around when he went to the Raiders, and he got a good statistical year. The Jacoby Myers, Taekwon Thornton, we got to see something out of the unproven rookie. And, of course, uh, if Kendrick Bourne is still going to be a major red zone threat, and especially a good route option, because obviously he's the slot of the receiving core, and Hunter Henry can pick up some good numbers. Because if something goes awry and Mac Jones just couldn't produce, because that's possibly going to happen over a sophomore season after nearly leading the AFC East, I can just see a regress here. So that's one. Some people would also think of the Arizona Cardinals regressing because DeAndre Hopkins is suspended for around several weeks. Marquise Brown, major, all, major trade over for an early round pick. Uh, Andy Isabella, A.J. Green is still on paper, one of the more notable receivers. Zach Ertz, Kyler Murray, given over that big bag, has something to prove over an underwhelming season after having a seven-game winning streak and just immediately crapping the bet. I think they only lost five of their last six and still pushing around bottom seat after they were leading the NFL for a while. They lose their prime linebacker, their prime linebacker, for Rashad Lawrence, Zaz and Collins, Buda Baker still there. Just lack of uh, face value over the backfield, and we forgot how much the Cardinals were just blowing out games, even against the Detroit Lions, that I think are going to be the black sheep for a major wild card appearance. Over the years of struggling to make it around the postseason with the way they were playing in their culture and a lot of smart offseason decisions. So I feel like the Lions have more of a chance of pushing for playoff success in the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not saying that they are going to miss the playoffs. I just feel like they're not going to be playing as well as they did the last year. That's that's all I'm saying. Tennessee Titans is also one of them. Even though they've been dominating the division and Derrick Henry coming back over to the fold. A.J. Brown for Robert Woods after missing a whole season. Taylor Burks and just Westbrook inclined. Like, we're not expecting that much. Austin Hooper is a reliable tight end to push around the red zone. And he's a good body when it comes to pushing out the block, but he's not that much of a good extension to the O-line. And they got to know that Ryan Tannehill's mid. 
The Titans got to admit that they're pushing for rotating the rookie if Tannehill can barely win up to three games over the quarter season. If that doesn't happen, Titans got to rotate over to the rookie option and trade over Tannehill for a, at least a desperate contender like they did before when they were sick of Mariota only getting first round exits. I mean, technically second round exits because they did pick up a win against the Chiefs. Jeffrey Simons, Bud Dupree, they, Armani H Hooker, Armani Hooker, and Kevin Bayard, and Kevin Bayard isn't bad, and so is the Michael Griffin, but it's just they'll still allow over the deep ball, and these and the Titans just allow too many easy going games whenever they pick up the momentum. They're still a primordial rushing offense, and even when they do have good weapons, Tannehill just too much of a plain safe quarterback that's not consistent over his deep ball accuracy in the offensive line is just too half baked on the way they're like moving out the ball. That's why Derrick Henry got him always bulk up around the offseason, bro. Hopefully this is a rebound season for Robert Woods, because missing out missing out the whole Super Bowl season with the with the Rams does do something to players. Right? Zach? I'm joking. <laughs> Baltimore Ravens, they could, they could push up a major season, possibly. Kyle Fuller still over on the unit. Marcus Peters, Kyle Ham Hamilton, Marlon Humphreys. A great secondary unit with a lack of a pursuing defense, even though Ty uh, Tyrus Bowser and Calais Campbell are still there. And everybody just pushing over the zone, the zone uh, three four formation, because that's how it is to spread out your front, your front four. Even though your linebacker is always going to push the edge anyway, it's it, there's like a lack of diversity when it comes to forming a uh, defensive, a defensive front nowadays. Rashad Bateman's, uh, Rashad Bateman's good, but not a major option. So did, so is J T Dobbins. That we know that's going to be a pass run option. Lamar is just the secondary running back whenever, like Gus Edwards averages around like 35 yards a game. And it's sad too because Tyler Hunt Huntley, I thought he was going to go to a different team, but he was a good resigning because he's actually an above average second string quarterback. Not starting caliber, but he can put up points whenever the team needs it. Mark Andrews is still probably going to be the second highest in total uh, receiving yardage. And Nick Boyle, too, is a good secondary string on the tight end formation. I just don't feel like the Eagles, or the Ram the Ravens, have already overswained their hype as a major offensive unit. Because I feel like they've been exposed. They've been overwashed on the rushing offense. Lamar has to improve over his deep ball accuracy a lot. And just restrict himself. Because it's like for those idiots that play Madden, just understand... It does matter. Like, sliding is not to just protect yourself with the football. The quarterback shouldn't get hurt running the ball. So that's why they slide. Get over it. Kansas City could be one of them, seeing how they just lost one of their biggest all-pro receivers out of Tyreek Hill for Juju Smith-Schuster. And Marquez Valdez Golding. Kelsey's still there. Nicole Hardman and Josh Gordon are still there. So that can play into, you know, rotating the depth a bit. Because Clyde Edward Hilaire and Ronald Jones from the Buccaneers are there. So they can rotate over a good run pass option. And Ronald Jones is a great red zone threat. So don't get it twisted. The Chiefs can still make an impact. It's, it's just got to take a decline over the AFC that, you know, the Chiefs can, you know, make a difference after losing the Honey Badger. Justin Reed, Chris Jones is still there, Derek Notney, Frank Clark is, is still pushing down. They just have a lack of a linebacker unit that can push over the midfield. And that was the issue over the last year. They were letting out a lot of... Uh, big mistakes around the defensive front when it came to leaving over the midfield, 
zoning out and they'd be leaving like 30 to 40 round, uh, yard bombs. So the Chiefs can't be making those mistakes. And hopefully they can push up and still win the best offensive teams. But that's dependent if uh, Mahomes won't underperform in the early half of the season like he did last year until he had his second half comeback and still led over the AFC West when people thought that the Raiders were going to make a huge impact if it wasn't for the John Gruden uh, controversy. Henry Ruggs and just a decline over their coaching staff and their performances. That's That's tough. But this is a very exciting NFL season. Hopefully some of these teams prove me wrong, or they'll be like what I just called over this video. Depends on what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching the DSC Show, and I hope you subscribe for more.